We are now talking to former Ravens and Falcons All-Pro fullback Ovi Muheli. And obviously, Ovi Muheli Foundation is a nonprofit organization empowering youth, communities, and promoting environmental change. So uh, we'll be talking more about that with the interview. So, Ovi, tell us a little bit about... Uh, your background, obviously you played for the Falcons and the Ravens. You're an all-pro player. Uh, not many people could say they were an all-pro player. That means you were the best at your position uh, that year. So tell us a little bit about your career, where you came from, and, 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 and obviously being drafted uh, as early as you were. Yeah, um, I was blessed, man. I, I'm a, a, a regular dude that just likes or hates losing. And uh, like my, my parents are Nigerian immigrants who didn't even like football. Uh, when I, when I started playing in middle school. I, I didn't play Pee Wee. I started like in like eighth grade and just happened to be really good at it. But they wanted me to play soccer, uh, like football. Uh, they, they have uh, soccer greats in their family that, you know, had a chance to almost represent Nigeria uh, like on, on the national soccer stage. So they are big into me doing soccer. But I was – too big for soccer. Even at a young age, I was a sweeper, so I just kicked the ball really hard and got close, missed the ball most times, and broke a lot of shins, or almost broke a lot of shins, including mine. So uh, they they decided to give me a chance at football. They were excited about the whole scholarship thing at Wake Forest because it saved them some money, and they were uh, even more excited about me getting to uh, get drafted. And they were even more excited when I became the, the highest paid fullback in NFL history and got an $18 million contract off something they thought was <laughs> not even going to pay the bills. But that was a, but that is a good, you know, old school Nigerian doctor and was like, you need to go and go to medical school like your sister, like me, and be a doctor because that way you can be guaranteed a healthy living and great lifestyle. I said, Dad, I can do that after football, which I never ended up doing. But, you know, football uh, lasted longer than I thought. Ten years was a, was a great career and a chance to – meet some really cool people and play a sport that uh, I've always loved. So OV being drafted by the Baltimore Ravens fourth round in 2003, I think it was 2003 that you were drafted. Yeah. What was it like getting your name called? Where were you at? Were you in New York? Were you at home with your family? What was it like being uh, selected by the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, it was awesome. I, I definitely was not in New York, even though I was the best fullback. I think it was a BJ Askew. you, Myself, Justin Griffith, who originally, funny enough, was drafted to the Falcons, and I went to the Ravens, and I ended up coming to the Falcons. Uh, no, I don't know if there's ever been in the history of football a fullback invited to New York. Uh, we we um, are necessary, of course. Some people were not, but we're, we're never that highly lauded. Like even though like I was at the time you know, the highest paid fullback, I was still making, to say only, but I was making $3 million a year <laughs> and I was making less than kickers. Like the highest paid kickers making was more than me. So I, I had like third string receivers making more than me. And then it, it's fine. It's just that we get no respect. So I was uh, at home um, with my family, uh, just excited to get picked. My my agent, you know, the great Todd France, uh, he was with CAA most recently, but um, he was like, oh man, you're the best fullback on the draft. You might go as, uh, high as a uh, late second round. So I was, I was already counting my money and I said, okay, I look at this back in the day. We had slots. I look at my slot. I was like, all right, I can, you know, get this car and get this house. And I want to kick my mom, this money. And as I watched the draft and the second round was over, that's fine. I go third round and third round, you know, beginning middle. I thought, I think I'm going to call my name a second. Third round's gone. And in those days, I think, uh, I, I, day three was like the fourth round back in Oh three. So I'm sitting here watching through one day, two days. I'm in my third day. I'm like, come on. The fourth <laughs> round goes middle first round. The first, first beginning of it, middle. And I was like, I was so hot because fullbacks that weren't better than me were getting called. I'm like, if they're taking these bozos, like, when's my name getting called? The 134th pick of the 2003 draft, the Ravens, uh, Ozzy Newsome, finally <laughs> called me. And uh, – it was the best call. I was so frustrated. Like, I was going to make every team that passed on me, like they, everyone says all the time, pay for, for not choosing Ovi Mahaley. I was hot. <laughs> and I was also terrified when I realized that the Ravens drafted me, which had Ray Lewis and Peter Bolwer and Tony Zaragusa and uh, Ed Hartwell and Delius Thomas and Bart Scott and, <laughs> you know, Ed Reed and uh, Chris McCausch, every monster. Like, the number one defense in the NFL were my – sparring partners which was the best and worst thing ever because it, it got me 
it, it toughened and hardened me to where games were easy because practice was hard as hell, and it made me into who I am today. So you actually got to block for two of the better running backs of the, t- of the 2000s, and Jamal Lewis with the Ravens when he was there, and then Warwick Dunn when he went to Atlanta for a couple years. So what were they like in terms of like their being a, them being as teammates and also their running styles? Like How was it different adjusting with Lewis kind of being more of a power back and Dunn being more of a shiftier guy? How was it like adjusting yeah. to that? Well, well, I mean, Jamal Lewis was was a monster. That was one of the few situations where my tailback was bigger than me. I was two forty five, <laughs> uh, and he was two fifty. He was a, a, a giant, um, but solid muscle, like two hundred fifty pounds. Scary, scary fast. I mean, y'all saw him breaking all types of records, running three hundred yards and stuff. And uh, <laughs> Jamal was cool. He, he was laid back. He was just like, you know, don't mess it up, don't f it up. He always say, hey, 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 young boy, Mahaley, don't f it up for me. Don't you mess it up. Just block your man. I'll do the rest. I said, I got you. I got you, Lou. Uh, but no, it, it, he made it to where you didn't have to block the right guy. You just had to block somebody because he was really good about following me. He put his hand on my back and like pushed me forward. He pushed me down a couple times. Like, go, go, go. Like, There's nowhere to go. <laughs> the line's not moving. <laughs> but uh, uh, with with uh, work done, it was more you never knew where he was going to bounce out. You never knew he's going to make a cut block, which made the blocks for me harder because – I'm supposed to block this guy. I'm assuming war is right behind me. So my angles are with the assumption that he's right behind my back. And this guy jumps out to the side. Hey, jump out. I'll take you <laughs> where you want to go. But war will be so shifty. He fake this way, that way. I'm trying to block the guy and he's going left, right. And I'm thinking I have him. I'm blocking him right into war done. So I had to be more tempered with my aggressiveness. It was more of just fitting, not blowing the guy up. I just needed to get a body on him for war. And after work, I only got a year with work done. Then uh, I had the, the great Michael Turner, which was another power back that was loads of fun to block for. We used to talk trash to, uh, you know, Saints games. And, you know, I, I was 250, 255. I got a little bigger in my <laughs> older years. Uh, and he was like 250. No, he was, I'd say about 245. Still a big, heavy dude. And we would just rumble down and up the field, up and down the field. It was uh, good times. Mr. Ovi, we share the same birthday, by the way, so happy belated birthday, oh, June 10th. good stuff, man. Now, I know you brought up fullbacks and how you feel like they're not respected at all, and it's honestly not a dying position, but most wide receivers are tight ends now. They'll bring in behind the quarterback. And I think to... it is a dying position. I think it is. So now, Somewhat. Now <laughs> you've got Kyle Juszczyk, mm-hmm. who has been the best fullback now in about seven, eight years, respectfully. So... Yep. Do you think Kyle Juszczyk can kind of regenerate the fullback position, or do you think it's just going to be gone to the weeds? I think he can. I, I mean, one of the things uh, great about Kyle is that he, he's more of a complete back. You can see him cast out the backfield, and you can see him do some short yardage stuff. And uh, I think whenever they try and get H-backs to do it all because, oh, we'll just get a tight end or a guy who can, you know, uh, do it all, it, it, it never really works because when it comes to the run game, they're always – you know, blocking like tight ends. They're not blocking from a eye formation, run full speed, contact, you know, roll your hips and move people. Like, um, who was it? Uh, Todd Heap was with the Ravens mm-hmm. and Tony Gonzalez trying to kick me out of my fullback position <laughs> to keep the defense guessing. And on run plays, they go from tight end spot and line them in fullback and run plays. Both of them respectfully came up to me. And I remember, forget Tony Gonzalez. Uh, he said, hey, Ovi. Tell Coach I ain't doing that shit no more. I can tell him. That I'm not doing that shit. No. He was like, F no. I, I ain't doing it. I was like, you talk, hey, you're, you're Tony Gonzalez. I, I I can't. I try to tell him. I can catch the ball too. You know, I'm not you catching the ball, but I can stay in for these passing downs. He's like, my head hurts. I think I had like three concussions that one play. The same for me. So tight ends uh, like to talk big, but they don't want to – really get grimy and gutter and just, you know, go up there and, and, you know, beat heads in. That's not something that somebody who plays at the tight end position can usually do. So if they want to keep the run game alive and, and keep it, uh, I think um, uh, a really important part of the offense, you got to have a true fullback in there. I think Kyle is doing a great job. As you guys know, we are talking to former Ravens and Falcons and uh, St. Louis Rams all pro for four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over here. I was like, he played for the Rams. At least it's St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, <thank> uh, <laughs> <you>. <laughs> all pro fullback Ovi Muheli. Now, Ovi, 
What is it like? Now, obviously, you're a two-time second-team All-Pro in 2006 and 2010. What you was don't have it? to have a second-team. Just say two-time All-Pro. It sounds better. <laughs> I never had a second-team. Oh, Sorry. All-Pro yeah. player. What is it like yeah. getting that phone call and, and, and being introduced and, and them telling you that you made the All-Pro team? It was huge. Uh, the All-Pro w- it was really nice, but what really made – my day was the uh, the Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. In the 2011, I was All-Pro, my second All-Pro, my first Pro Bowl, because for fullbacks, you've really got to make a lot of noise and, and beat doors down people to notice you because you could have uh, the best fullback performance, but if your tailback is not balling out of control and if you're not winning and if you're not in a high-profile market, you'll get looked over every time. And I had, like, you know, of course, I'm going to say this, but, you know, realistically, I had, you know, four years out of my, my 10 years played where I was unquestionably the best fullback in the league from, you know, what the, like, I was always on the, you know, these lists of unsung heroes or, you know, gritty players. I got these like little small podcasters or fan sites that recognize because they actually get the, you know, the full 22 and they watch fullbacks and back when pro football focus was as infancy, they'd say, you know, the highest graded fullback as far as making your blocks over Mahaley year after year after year, but I didn't always have, again, the big market, the tailback with, uh, you know, stupid amount of yards or a winning team. And so they would choose – it would just – like, it, oh, it, it bothered me so much. They would choose fullbacks who are just fat tailbacks. Who, <laughs> oh, man, so many yards. He has these yards. He played tailback in college in Nebraska. He's just fat. And, or, oh, they say, oh, this, this uh, one fullback had – all these catches, he's a freaking tight end. That's why I had these catches. <laughs> not even a fullback. You just change your position and get into the Pro Bowl. I, I was so irritated. So when I finally got it in 2011, and I got a chance to go to the Pro Bowl, it was everything, man. Like Obviously, the Super Bowl is, is the ultimate, but the next to that, just knowing that, that you are the best at your position in the world or in, in, in America is an awesome feeling, and then – Playing with uh, greats like I had uh, Adrian Peterson, Marshawn Lynch, guys I was walking for in the Pro Bowl, and you know Russell Wilson, Drew Brees, my quarterback, and just playing with these guys who I, I watched around the league. I knew some of them, but that that level of respect where, where they looked at you was like, all right, I see you. Oh, I see thirty four. All right, Haley, I, I, I've been hearing that you've been handling your business, doing your thing, but there's a just a solidification in stone where they can't take it away from you. And for the Falcons, I was the First Pro Bowl fullback in the Falcons franchise history, wow, nice. which you know they can never take away from me. So uh, I, I, um, I, true Falcons fans, like you know, they get excited, they see me grocery store, but you know because of the helmet, because of my low profile nature, no one knows who the heck I am. <laughs> no one knows me. And I'm fine with that. I, I I've never been a you know, glory hound or you know where my it's me. Hey, <laughs> love me, love me, please. That's, uh, that's never been me, but it's always cool when you get a true Falcons fan. You're not Steve player. Young. You're not Joe Montana. Come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I, I don't have to worry about those issues. Uh, so no, I, I just appreciate whenever, uh, you know, the old school fans really, really understand uh, the role I played in some of our best years here.